So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to our session. Uh, this is part of the uh, community track. Um, I am here with a few others um, from Orlando, Florida, uh, from all the way from the United States. Uh, we represent the uh, OpenStack Central Florida group. Um, so, uh, you'll be coming along on this journey with us, and hopefully, you guys learn a thing or two about. Um, uh, some of the lessons that we've learned um, that helped us build and grow our community as well as to help um, build uh, not only our, our cloud, but um, also re our relationships with, with uh, everyone um, that's kind of uh, local to our group. Uh, so my name is Luke Short. Uh, I'm here from Red Hat. I'm part of the automation consulting team. I primarily work with automating um, the, uh, the OpenStack lifecycle uh, using Ansible. Uh, we also have uh, Joe Still um, from Phase 2 Technology. Uh, he's a senior uh, DevOps engineer. Uh, and also uh, Maria uh, Bracho, uh, who is also from Red Hat, part of the OpenStack uh, product team. Um, and uh, we had one more member of our, our group who unfortunately couldn't make it, so I, I just want to give, give a quick shout out to uh, Donnie Hamlet. Uh, he's been a big help. He's uh, the leader of our organization. He helped bring this all together, and uh, we wouldn't be here today without him. Uh, so the, first of all, a big, huge thank you to uh, Hostime, who actually has provided us uh, with uh, cab space, uh, free networking, free power, free servers to help us build our community cloud. So this is 100% free, uh, no strings attached cloud, which is pretty amazing that uh, companies are allowing us uh, to do this as a user group. Uh, Starter Studios has also been uh, a huge supporter in this. Uh, we needed a very large space where we, we could convene and meet with each other um, to have all these uh, amazing talks and presentations uh, from the community, um, from different members of, of companies from all over the world uh, who have come to, to help give us some presentations. Um, Red Hat has also been a, a large sponsor uh, of this. Um, from this picture here, uh, we, uh, Maria was actually able to, to help us uh, get a meetup, uh, a whole bunch of uh, executives, uh, engineers, consultants, all over from Red Hat were, were to come. They, they came over, uh, met up with our local community. Um, it, it was such a great time. We had people who were from our group who weren't even from our group. Uh, we were all able to convene, learn from each other, network. Uh, it was such a great experience. So um, the OpenStack uh, Central Florida group, um, CFL Central Florida, um, mainly the Orlando area, so, so think Disney World, Mickey Mouse. Um, uh, Donnie Hamlet, uh, as I said earlier, was the founder of our organization. Uh, he helped bring us together towards our common goal of learning about OpenStack. And it goes um, much further than just OpenStack. So as they were kind of talking about in the opening keynote today, um, it's kind of all about open infrastructure. You know, OpenStack is not just a single service. Uh, we're talking about all the different technologies involved. So it's, it's written in Python. Um, a lot of services are moving to containers that are managed by Kubernetes. Um, there's, there's all these different technologies that uh, we're all getting together to, to learn about um, and, and share our experiences uh, with each other. Um, so, so currently, um, we, we have uh, over 300 people registered on meetup.com uh, who have either uh, come to previous events or have been interested in some of our event events. Uh, we've had tons of uh, presenters, which I'll, I'll talk about um, in, in just a second. Um, but it's, it comes back to this whole idea that uh, OpenStack is, is such a great technology to, to bring people together. Uh, because you don't just have a single focus. You can kind of branch off 
um, into wherever um, your, your heart's desire is. You know, uh, there are so many other community groups nearby. There's, there's the Python user group, there's Docker user group, and we've already worked with them um, to, to help kind of um, spread the knowledge around um, because there's, there's so many uh, overlying areas with that technology. Um, so here is a, a list of um, past events uh, and, and speakers. Um, this isn't even the, the whole list. Uh, the, the main point I want to get across here is the fact that you know, we, we got together on our own in our spare time, and we were able to get all of these great presentations. And all you have to do is go out and ask. Uh, so many companies out there, I mean, uh, Red Hat, Suse, Rackspace, Chef, they're all so willing to to literally fly out to wherever you're at, give a talk to your community, um, even if they don't fly out, even just virtually. And there's so much you can learn from these experts in the field. So you, um, you are learning uh, so much from this. Um, getting together as a community helps you to build your own skills, helps you to help mentor others. There's, there's so much opportunity for, for everyone involved. Sorry, before we introduce this video, we talked about building a community. And this is um, all about people and where we live and where we are. So Orlando, um, probably the first thing that you think about is Disney and the parks. And I think uh, at least the two of us have annual passes to Disney. <laughs> and I'm pretty mm. sure look as well. Uh, and, and we do do that, but we also um, you know, have a community of technologists. So we want to tell you a little bit about that with this video. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness. And to those who live here happily, as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form. Entertainment in every variety. And thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know, is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. So we have a great community, and we have a lot of different industries that get together to, you know, do some magic. Uh, yeah, that one. We got a whole set of presses. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in really good company. Uh, not necessarily very specific, uh, you know, OpenStack or Kubernetes developers or engineers, etc. But we're uh, surrounded by folks that do consume that. Tons of IT departments starving to get more information and to learn. That's why. The goal, the specific goal with which Dunny, who's not here with us, but uh, wanted to be, uh, created this user group was to get us together to learn. So the first goal of this group is to be a learning platform for um, all of these uh, professionals that, that want to come and share with us. Um, part of the things that, um, that I also wanted to say is, again, it's not Silicon Valley. Um, so obviously we don't have you know, tons of OpenStack operators or tons of um, OpenStack developers, but we have managed to bring uh, people to come and talk to us and share with us how to, um, how to build clouds. And we've had a couple of examples of building clouds from scratch, uh, which we will see more uh, about that. Um, so yeah, this is, this is Orlando, big in the simulation and entertainment industry, obviously. Um, tons of universities and, and others. 
Um, one of the things that we had to figure out, because we're such a small community, we needed to figure out a way of um, getting together. And one of the things that brought us together was OpenStack, it was open source. Uh, but then we're very familiar with building uh, open source software, but here we wanted to apply the same principles to open source software to how we uh, collaborate and organize, and organize ourselves. So I earlier shared with, um, I think it was Luke first, yeah. um, uh, this book called The Open Organization. I've read it you know, years before, and it was actually the reason why I wanted to go uh, and work for Red Hat, and I, then I did apply, and then that happened. And, and I shared that, and I said, hey, I think we need to um, work together you know, this way. I think we need this community to apply these principles so that we can be more effective. Since we're so few of us and um, we're busy, uh, so organizing meetings, bringing speakers, getting, you know, getting the ball rolling and getting the community cloud up was being very challenging when you have only two to three hours to really apply to, to work on this side project. So we started um, thinking about this and the rest of the, the group was very positive about it and we said, sure, let's apply the tenets of the open source way into the way that we work. And those are um, right here. So from a transparency perspective, we needed to make sure that um, open source organization works to make their data available to others so everyone knows what is going on and has, accessible, uh, has access to all the information and also to external participants. So we're very transparent in, in the way that we work and that allows us to work and communicate better. If you cannot make it to a meeting or if somebody else cannot come, then we still you know, get the ball rolling and moving. Inclusivity, um, this is you know, pretty obvious from, uh, from the word, but it, it also, uh, it's inviting others with different backgrounds to come and help us. So, uh, I mean, some of the obvious on this are, you know, uh, gender, creed, and whatnot. But we have a lot of inclusivity in different technical backgrounds. So, networking professionals, storage professionals, and infrastructure professionals come together to, to help each other uh, build a cloud because OpenStack needs all of that. And then also adaptability. So, be able to, uh, you know, be open to change. Um, so at any time that we started a new cloud, um, it took us like six months to then get together again and, and start the new one. And OpenStack obviously releases um, quite often. So we were like, okay, now we have to go start from scratch and figure out where, which release we're on and try to see you know, which distribution we're gonna try this time, et cetera. So we need to be very open to change and adapt. Um, collaboration, again, pretty obvious. Uh, but really being open to others coming in and jumping in. It was really important for me working for Red Hat, specifically from a product perspective, not to be very prescriptive to the community, but actually be a member of the community. So the way that I'm contributing is um, just sort of bringing everyone together and, and making sure that the resources are available to learn and to continue to, to, to do what we do. And also community at the center. So that, that's pretty obvious. Cool. All right. Yeah. So our first attempt at a community cloud was back in 2016 with the Liberty release. Uh, we had the bright idea to perform a totally manual installation. I think that was actually Donnie's idea. I think he said, it'll be fun. It was. Uh, it, no, it was fun. It's just, it was, it was a lot of work. So uh, this photo actually is of the OpenStack CFL team. I think there were like 10 people that came. It was a good turnout. Um, it was really fun to have that many people there. Hostime actually even sponsors the food. Uh, thank you, Vicky, if you're watching. She's the director of Hostime Marketing. Uh, to get us started, Donnie uh, brought three servers and a C3550 25 or 24 port switch. Uh, that'll you'll see why that's a, a silly later. Um, we installed Center West Seven. Uh, it actually took a bit of time to do. We probably should have done it beforehand rather than be like, "Give me a sec and let me install three servers with CentOS 7." Uh, you'll notice we should have prepped. It turns into kind of a recurring lesson here. <laughs> uh, after that, a lot of time was set up, uh, was spent setting up the, uh, the switch, configuring the required VLANs, uh, making sure that everything was uh, configured as was expected for the build. Um, 
Uh, and then finally, we got around to following the manual installation guide, which is linked up there. I think it, it goes to the latest version. Uh, though these days, of course, as we'll cover later, uh, there are better ways of installing OpenStack than painstakingly doing the manual process. We get better over time. Yeah, no, it's, it's all about iteration, right? Um, the manual installation actually seemed to go pretty well. We didn't get a lot of errors. Um, we followed the guide very, very specifically. Um, but in the end, there was trouble with public networking. Uh, we just couldn't seem to ping the VM. It, it was up, and it looked like it was up, and it thought it had an IP, but it just no access, and it wasn't the security groups. Um, <laughs> uh, luckily, we had Spencer Crum, uh, developer advocate at IBM, to guide us through the neutron troubleshooting, another theme, the group and uh, uh, collaboration for, for the necessary competences to get it done. Uh, network configurations were a pain. Uh, this is where a lot of the waiting was. It was like, hopefully Spencer knows what to do, and we were all just, you know, listening and waiting for Spencer to tell us the answer. Uh, there were trouble where we didn't label things correctly. We didn't follow the architecture we planned. We had this whole plan and followed almost none of it. Made a bunch of ad hoc changes that were uh, that bit us later. Um, it, uh, it didn't help that a lot of us were missing the required competence to understand VLANs. I know I didn't really quite understand VLANs. I thought I understood VLANs. I did not at the time. I do now, I think. Um, Spencer did get it working in the end. Uh, I think we cheered, right, when he got one of the VMs to ping? Yeah. Yeah, there was, it was a, a very exciting moment when he was like, yeah, it's actually uh, uh, connecting. Um, uh, we learned a lot about the main OpenStack services and their configuration. It was very interesting, very informative, uh, and, but it was a difficult process. Though it was quite a long day, uh, it was definitely a fun experience to have everyone involved there. Uh, it was very cool to have the community. Uh, so, after adopting the tenets of open organization, as Maria described, uh, the OpenStack CFL community members were able to operate with a little more autonomy. Um, rather than hopefully having the availability of an individual, we were all able to just do what we thought was best. You know, the community itself became open source is the way it goes. Good book. Um, in early 2018, I think it was Luke, actually, that pitched a reboot of the community cloud uh, using Ansible for networking management, uh, OpenStack triple O, the RDO packages, uh, and the Rocky release to get everything containerized and automated. Uh, I quickly established a, I did a free private GitLab repo because um, we wanted to use uh, GitHub, but it's like public and I wanted to use like a weird password management, so it's private for now. We hope <laughs> to open it up later when we have better password management, but uh, got that up for good. Task management, documentation, and uh, task management. It was actually really helpful to have, like, what are we doing next? Um, everyone that was interested, I just gave them just full admin, just get everyone all the access they needed. Again, open org. If you empower people with access, they can refer to it and add to it. There was a lot of really good collaboration there. I think it'd be awesome. Uh, so first up was the uh, Ansible networking automation. Uh, Luke was able to hook us up with uh, Colin McCarthy, uh, a Red Hatter with some serious Ansible networking experience. Uh, Colin shared his GitHub examples with us. Um, and I think I, yep, I put the link there. Check it out. Um, and he showed us how to tame Cisco's iOS with Ansible. Uh, I thought I had recorded it effectively, but I botched the audio recording, so it's just him scrolling silently through his GitHub iOS examples while I try to get my dog to stop barking. Uh, so it didn't quite work out. We tried to record all the sessions. That first one did not go well. I was no longer in charge of recording after that. <laughs> uh, however, I, I was inspired after Colin's explanation to give it a try on our own switch. Uh, with zero switch administration experience, you'd think that the Liberty installation would count. It did not. Um, but with zero experience, uh, we first had to enable SSH on this thing. Uh, there was only Telnet accessible, the C3550, which is why I specified long EOL. I asked someone on the Cisco forum for help, uh, you know, where do I find this? And they were like, go look for it, which is not helpful. Um, I uh, finally, after Googling like the exact firmware someone was recommending, I found some sketchy FTP site on some random IP and just scraped all of the firmware down. 
Uh, I uh, installed one of the firmwares that looked like a bigger number, but I found later after some more research that you needed the K9 version for the crypto functionality. That's what gives us SSH, which we needed for Ansible. It doesn't work, or it might, but is not best working through Telnet. I actually don't know if it works through Telnet. Um, certainly not through the console serial cable. Uh, so after installing the K9 firmware and following some guides for SSH, I uh, was able to authenticate with Ansible. Pretty exciting. Um, uh, the iOS config Ansible module worked actually pretty well, but the, the template, it was weird, didn't seem to quite apply what we were telling it to do. We would be like, oh, you know, port nine should have these configurations, but when we'd run it, it would have like some of the old configurations, so that was kind of strange at this stage uh, of, of the operation. Um, another example, like port 11 just would not respond to anything. It was just not changing at all, which made no sense. Um, but uh, uh, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, none of us actually knew how to set up a port channel in the Cisco iOS. So in the video, because we recorded the Zoom session, a lot of our meetups for this Rocky installation were virtual. Uh, we literally, in the video, Google how to do it, and we're like, let's learn how port channels work. It only took like a, like a couple minutes to find like just the Cisco official, here's how you do it. We added it to the Ansible template yeah. uh, uh, config and were able to apply it without issue, I think because there was no like extant configuration to try to overwrite. Um, so that worked really well, but still port 11, not playing nice. <laughs> Um, we cut the recording off at the uh, hour and a half. I thought it was a good sweet spot because I don't want to just have like a six hour video where I'm like struggling to fix the, the networking. Um, but uh, I, think, I thought that was a, uh, at least an interesting educational experience. Can we get the next slide? Oh yeah, actually Luke, do you want to uh, discuss this item a little bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll tackle this. So. Um, one of the interesting things about running a free cloud is that a lot of our hardware is uh, kind of ancient and uh, low spec. So, um, you know, it, if like a port 11 on the switch didn't work, it could very well be like a, a, a hardware malfunction. We don't really know. So it's, it makes it a little bit more complicated to troubleshoot uh, stuff like that. Um, so, so right here is uh, an architecture diagram I came up with for our cloud. Um, so uh, the main things here is we have our, our Cisco switch, um, and uh, for uh, Triple O to work, um, let me just give a brief overview of Triple O. Um, it's the, the upstream version of the Red Hat OpenStack platform, um, and it, Triple O stands for uh, three O's. It's OpenStack on OpenStack, so we actually deploy an all-in-one OpenStack on the under cloud or the director node, um, and that is used to actually install the over cloud. So that's going to be the uh, end result that your uh, users will be using and interacting with. Um, so we have our uh, under cloud, uh, that's probably our uh, uh, beefiest server, because um, this is running all of the OpenStack services on it. Uh, from here, it's going to be using um, Ironic and Nova to provision and manage um, the controller and compute node. Um, but what we have here is very simplistic. Um, this is just a simple, um, just one controller, one compute, no HA. We just need a cloud up and running. We're just playing around with it. We're just learning. Um, so this is what we got. Uh, and we're hoping to, to purchase um, and possibly get more hardware donated so we can uh, eventually expand this out and see how far we can go with this. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, so the next uh, part of story time here is the, uh, the undercloud. Uh, so uh, to prep it, I, and notice we prepped it this time. I did not say, hold on a sec and wait in silence while I go install it. I uh, imaged it with the latest CentOS 7. Uh, I still had to finalize the switch configuration because I, I didn't get port 11 working, which was part of, <laughs> as you saw, our, our diagram. They're like, we need port 11. Uh, so after the upgrade, though, my Ansible playbook would no longer authenticate, which was kind of weird. I, I solved it later, I'll tell you. Um, I wound up uh, just logging into the switch and doing it all manually, uh, applying the configuration, desired configuration manually, which actually was a good thing because it revealed the trouble with port 11, the mystery of port 11. Uh, the commands I was trying to run were throwing errors that were not obvious, right, in the, the Ansible operation. It didn't tell us it failed. It was like, I applied the config, you know, I ran the things you told me to run. 
Um, but uh, uh, I, I learned here uh, that I actually need to make sure to be more idempotent about the way uh, the commands are used. Idempotency meaning if I run it twice, it'll yield the same result, which is what a lot of Ansible is, is uh, uh, motivated by. In this case, uh, I had to use the command switch port to activate it as a switch port. Um, I noticed in the errors it was saying, error cannot do that, must be switch port, and Google was like, you need to run switch port. Uh, after I ran switch port, I was able to run the other commands just fine, they all worked well. I added switch port to the uh, automation config, which I haven't run yet, because I did a bunch of manual config, I was gonna wait until after we did our build to break it. Um, but uh, uh, with that up at the top, had I put switch port at the top, my commands would have run without, without issue. Um, so good, good lesson, and I guess, you know, good on the manual process for educating me on that. And then that would be. I'm sorry? No, and then the undercloud install. Oh, well, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that uh, the authentication trouble turned out to be uh, Ansible 2.7 changed how uh, networking administration uh, was configured. I think it's better the way they did it, but yeah, it, it's more so, streamlined. It, it's it's way cleaner. It's the way to do it. But I I was surprised and confused at first. But it, you know, one quick look at the docs is like, here's how you do it. Thank you, Ansible. Um, uh, what was it? Oh, and then uh, the actual undercloud process, which is just one command. Uh, worked without without flaw, which is kind of boring, but awesome, I guess, that it's working, but I have no <laughs> funny story about how it had anything but success, so that worked really well. I, it's like 50 containers or something yeah. uh, uh, based on Cola, just up and working, so that was actually really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how big of a headache OpenStack is, but when you come to deploy the undercloud, the all-in-one step, it's it's the simplest process. Like, the, the Red Hat engineers in the community have, like, figured out a very streamlined process to just set everything up and just have it work, and that's very important considering you want your undercloud to be as stable as possible to then manage your overcloud that it's actually deploying. Uh, cool. So uh, before we could utilize the undercloud, though, for deploying the overcloud, we had to prepare uh, IPMI on the overcloud nodes. Um, so uh, the actual undercloud installation went well, but it being utilized needs some preparation. Uh, IPMI was prepared from the BIOS and with IPMI tool. Uh, we learned about native VLANs. Uh, untagged packets get treated as, in this case, I think it was VLAN 100 per our architecture. Diagram packet comes in, tags 100, and then uh, uh, comes back out untagged. So you can use things like IPMI, which does support VLAN, but in this case we didn't configure it with VLAN, uh, DHCP, and PXE. You know, when you're booting up, it's like uh, it is untagged. So we needed the native VLAN. Uh, one of the overcloud nodes was accessible over IPMI, worked really well, and the other one just didn't. It uh, uh, gave us a strange error that uh, we later found had to do with it's basically not accessible. Um, one of our community members, Justin, found a great option. Uh, apparently, sometimes with IPMI, even if you've configured it and it looks like it's gonna work, you need to turn the machine all the way off and then back on. So his idea was to turn it off and on again, which worked really well, thank you, Justin. Um, we actually were like, there's no way this is gonna seriously be the answer here, uh, but it was. Um, yeah, I think we had to literally unplug the power plug and then plug it back in. Yeah, no, I, I <laughs> turned it off, unplugged it, power to make sure like even the, you know, uh, like the, the capacitor or whatever, like all the power was definitely out and then plugged it back in, it worked up immediately. So uh, that was working really well. I didn't want to mention, it's really interesting, especially with all the people I've been mentioning, you know, look at what they helped us with, look at what they helped us with, having all of these uh, diverse competencies available to us was super valuable. I mean, it really shows the, the value of making sure you have, I think it was mentioned in one of the keynotes, all of the necessary competencies to accomplish a task. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, so fixing VLANs, and I'm, I, he's gonna control the thing, and I'm gonna do it like a, so uh, uh, this, this event I thought was a, a lot of fun. It was actually captured in one of our latest videos at like the hour mark. So it's funny that we heard earlier in the Volkswagen keynote that networking is the hard part. It's like yeah. the hardest part, right? Uh, it so, is, they're not lying. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, so Luke pointed out the uplink was using uh, VLAN 100 instead of VLAN 10. This is like from our Liberty install. We used VLAN 100 for you know, uh, the access port packet comes in, tagged 100, and then anyone that wants to have public subnet access, you need VLAN 100. In our case, we targeted VLAN 10. 
rather than change our desired specification, we were like, or I, I was like, no, no, we, we'll do it right. We'll make it the way that we said we would. Let me change it to VLAN 10. Uh, I boasted about how I can totally switch the uplink without having to get out of my desk. You know, I, I will keep it online, I'll keep my access, and I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring the new one up, I'll start using it, and then I'll bring the other one down, and I won't have to get out of my desk. Uh, so I added VLAN 10 to the, uh, the undercloud trunk and then switched the VLAN 10 on the uplink. And uh, Luke, can I get the next slide? And it stopped responding, right? Because that's how it goes. Uh, and if you, you go to the next slide, actually, because it's kind of a, a reveal situation, I, I, SSH isn't responding now. Um, so I definitely had made a mistake. <laughs> Um, and if you give me the last slide, here's uh, a screen cap of my surprise and, and Donnie laughing at me, uh, actually, which was a lot of fun. That's actually a picture of Donnie at the bottom there. Um, I had forgotten the server. Uh, the server, you know, was not able to accept these VLAN packets, so I had the switch all, all correct, but I did not apply it to the server. Um, you, need both. I, you need both. So, and I'm, it, it's funny because, like in this video, I'm like, no, I know what I did, uh, but I mean, it, the rest of the video is me picking up my laptop, running into the co-location area, you know, setting it like in the cab while I, you know, console the server <laughs> and bring the interface up on the new VLAN, um, which was a lot of fun. They were laughing at me the whole time, uh, all in good fun, of course. Uh, if I had remembered to add the VLAN 10 to the server, it, it I feel like it would have worked and I wouldn't have had to get out of my desk, but uh, of course it failed. Um, so I was gonna say, so uh, uh, to end that, um, that's uh, a lot of the interesting lessons and experiences we've learned. I mean, you can't uh, do stuff without experiencing some troubleshooting. Yeah, so to, uh, to end this off, I just wanna say, um, just mention, you know, the, these are some of the, the, the tools that we're using for, for our community. Um, I, Meetup has been a great thing to actually get people together at a physical location. Uh, Slack is amazing for, for communication with everyone uh, to keep tabs on what's going on. Uh, GitLab for source control, for Ansible playbooks, uh, for triple O deployment templates. Um, Zoom for video conferences this is a recent tool we've, we've kind of moved to. Uh, it's very important for us to have regular updates. We're wanting to move to having meetups uh, twice a week. And even if everyone can't attend, uh, we at least want to have it recorded and share it with the group to make sure that everyone can, can catch up, see what's going on, and kind of learn and see um, you know, everything that we're doing. Uh, so hopefully, you know, with this, this presentation, you guys are kind of inspired to create your own community group, build your own cloud, because it's such an amazing experience. And you can get so much help and support from the community. It's, it's amazing. I, like, uh, OpenStack is uh, one of the most amazing pieces of, of software. And uh, you, you will find so much help um, on IRC channels, um, mailing lists, just, just everywhere. So I encourage you, create your own uh, community groups. Um, you know, message us. Um, you could even um, connect. Uh, we got a QR code uh, links to uh, our Let's Talk link. This this has a bunch of links to uh, our, our Slack and, and different outlets um, that we kind of push out information. So hopefully we can all kind of work together to build a, a global presence of uh, community cloud. So uh, thank you guys very much. <laughs>Uh, so the question was, is there a conflict of interest um, having different employers uh, working together? I can sure, I can answer that. So um, as part of the, you know, just being open organization and working with open source, um, this is not part of a company specific, but it's part of 100% community. We, um, we seem very red hat heavy over here because we live in Orlando. <laughs> But we have members from um, you know, other companies also joining us. In fact, we ha have um, folks from other companies come and visit us. Uh, that's why it was so important to, to enable us to have virtual meetings as well, because not everybody lives in Orlando and can come and, and virtually just talk to us about 
um, the stuff that we're doing. Uh, from a company itself, uh, having trouble with the work that we're doing, all we use is open source. So there, we don't use, uh, although the, the, the first one was, a, we did a SUSE uh, install once with SUSE. Yeah, uh, well, that was the, yeah, just, to, just to experience and test the technology, but that was, was still an educational was, experience. Exactly, so it's mostly educational, and we do it, obviously, with full rights to, to the stuff that's, uh, that's com you know, company-specific. But the, the goal is that this community cloud is infrastructure that is, again, some of it has been free. The colocation um, place is hosted by host time, which gives us access for free. Um, and we work with open source. So it's just really professionals getting together. There's absolutely no conflict at all. Yeah, the entire motivation was just educational. Yeah. I mean, actually, like it, it's not even majority Red Hat, although we did have that awesome majority right. Red Hat event where they explained like, the history of OpenStack. Right. Um, it is you know, people uh, working in DevOps and other locations right. or people that are just interested in the technology. Yeah, and most employers like having their folks attend because it's really free training. Yeah. Um, yep. So yeah. that's what host time is pretty much giving us a quarter cap, which if you add up through the number of years we, we, we said it's significant yeah, money. Very valuable. Actually, it's it's interesting. I'd like to, to uh, add to that. Um, so uh, uh, I'd been at host time at the time, and a lot of the motivation for you know, well, let's host this cab was, hey, if we host this cab, and we hang out with all these people that know everything, and we get all of this completely free education and experience, yeah. people will just shower you with knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, so I thought that was exceptionally valuable, and uh, if anything, I think we came out uh, on top getting, getting that value. It was very, very uh, interesting. And of course it's collaboration and it's a best effort, and obviously fun should be part of the mix because a lot of things happen if you don't have, you know, if you don't take it like hard lead, then it just gets pretty sad. Any other questions? Thank you for the question. Thank you. Yep. It really varies. Like uh, we mentioned, we have about 300 uh, members signed up, and some are just, um, how do I call it, um, scrollers, or they just like to see what we do, but they don't come and join the meetings. Um, we've had, when we have folks come and visit us, then we have larger meetings, but we get to about 30, max, 40 people. Sometimes we have meetings of 10 or 12, and we have virtual meetings as well. Yeah, we, we find the, the largest turnouts is when we're doing really cool stuff like actually installing OpenStack. That's when everyone shows up. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the network installation wasn't as popular. Um, and the, the bi-weekly, I believe you were referring to an interest in uh, rapid iteration on the, the community cloud. Um, I right. think we have more infrequent, though, uh, educational experiences. Yeah. Docs and stuff, thank you. Any other questions? Because we had used other clouds before, and this seemed like another way to do another installer. So, and, and it was really, you know, who we had available to come and help. I, honestly, I'd actually like to mention, um, so we, we had played with OpenStack Ansible because we were all like, Ansible is the future here. Um, yeah, we've, we've pretty much, we've, we've played around with like, all the different OpenStack solutions. Um, I think we've, we've, we've messed with Crowbar, OpenStack Ansible, uh, and Triple O. Uh, right now we're playing with Triple O. Um, I mean, part of that is because a lot of the technologies it's moving towards is, is a lot of what the focus of our group is. So, um, containers. Yeah, Docker containers, Ansible. Ansible um, there, there's um, Kubernetes on OpenStack has been a big thing too. Um, that Triple has been getting a lot of more integration on. Um, so there's just a lot of technologies that have a lot of synergy that um, everyone seems to be uh, interested in. And I mean, to be honest, when uh, Luke had pitched Triple O, I was like, that actually sounds really cool because I'm very interested in the Heat project and uh, uh, Ironic. So I mean, that's that's Triple O right there. Yeah, which is very interesting. And Ansible. And, and Ansible, yes, but the, the, I, was, I was really looking forward to seeing that bare metal provisioning. It's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually curious, actually. Uh, is anybody, I guess, raise hands if anyone's interested at all or is experiencing currently uh, making their own OpenStack cloud outside of like a company purpose? Um, what's, your, what's your use case? Now it's uh, in the 
Okay. So we are trying to build up more community around open source cloud to show that or show companies and uh, people that it's possible to use uh, open source or cloud infrastructure. Absolutely. And it's possible to run something else that we have worked with. Yep. And uh, this is uh, part of our uh, interest. So it's like the interest is to build up community and also build so people will buy more services from Red Hat and Susan and others. So we can sell more services ourselves. And we do people we like. Yeah. So it's, 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 everything is open, it's interest, it's Awesome. So this is a, sorry because you don't have a mic, but this is a group from Norway that's getting together basically a community of um, cloud enthusiasts to, to, to show that this can happen and that over an infrastructure is the thing. So I think we have... Uh, no, that's awesome. That's exactly yeah. what I'm hoping to hear. Very cool. Yeah, Thank very. you. If you want to visit Disneyland, Disney World. No, you can, we can definitely talk. Yeah, um, and if anyone is interested in uh, either joining our operation Absolutely. or uh, seeding or starting one of their own or uh, collaborating with us on ours with theirs, because you can do federation, multiple clouds yeah. and do federation, um, I definitely think it would be uh, interesting or at the very least educational to, yeah. uh, to have that experience. Um, so please, uh, uh, please reach out if uh, that is of interest to you. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming. Yes, yeah, have a great day at summer, guys. Thank you. Thank you.